Epic 7 players, welcome back to another video. My name is Pat, and in this one we'll be talking about Sermia's little sister, who's apparently really hot in the meta right now, Carrot Ranka. As with all my videos, we'll be doing a complete breakdown from the very basics, including the skills and stats, as well as some more advanced stuff, such as endgame equipment builds and also teammate recommendations for World Arena. So, if you know nothing about Researcher Carrot, this is the video for you. Researcher Carrot is a fire mage of the Sagittarius Zodiac type. Because of her skill tree, due to her specialty changed nature, she shares no stat lines with any other characters in Epic 7. When we take a look at her stats, she has 1039 attack, which when adjusted for the rune in her skill tree is actually 1194. She has 3,925 health, which when adjusted due to the rune in her skill tree, she actually has 4,906 base health, 110 speed, 606 defense, which when adjusted for the rune in her skill tree is actually 666 defense, 27% critical hit chance, 150 critical hit damage, 5% dual attack chance, surprisingly 0% effectiveness, and 0% effect resistance. So before we can talk about Researcher Carrot herself, we first have to talk about Burn, which is what the entire kit revolves around. For those of you who do not know, Burn's damage is equal to 60% of the caster's attack, ignoring 70% of the target's defense. Her S1 swing has a 0.95 multiplier. This is pretty low for an S1, it's slightly below average. Uh, but it makes up for it by having two pretty interesting properties. It is a 35 to 60% chance to slow the target based on not only Researcher Carrot's skill enhance level, but also the Faith Rune in her skill tree. It also detonates all burns, which means that she will do all of the burn damage up front, rather than having to wait several turns for them to naturally expire. This move additionally grants her 10% combat readiness thanks to the Solitude Rune in her skill tree. Her S2 is a passive Flame Barrier, which when she's attacked, places a burn stack on the character who attacked her and also grants her a huge barrier equal to 60 to 78% of her attack based on skill enhance. This skill can trigger only once per turn. Because it only triggers once per turn, if you build her fast to cycle turns quickly, this shield will be up more often. Additionally, if her attack is built sky high, the barrier is absolutely massive. In both cases, it makes this character very, very difficult to kill unless you outright one-shot her. Her S3, Flame Spout, is an AoE attack with a 1.0 multiplier. It dispels one buff before placing up to two burns on all enemies. Burns have a 60 to 100% chance of being applied depending on not only Carrot's skill enhance, but the wedge rune in her skill tree. Additionally, she can gain the continuous healing buff for one turn when she uses the skill, thanks to the order rune that is in her skill tree. The soul burn that she has grants her an extra turn on her S3, which is really, really powerful. This guarantees not only a strip, but also burns and the ability to detonate one target all in one nice little package. The reason why everyone is playing Researcher Carrot right now is because she has comparable or better stats to both versions of Araminta, while also having innate survivability thanks to her S2 passive and a dispel that other burn characters so desperately need to function. When it comes to skill priority for Researcher Carrot, since she is a 3 star and she doesn't use Molagoras, you pretty much should always have her plus 15. No excuses. Covering the last three runes that we didn't talk about in the skill portion of the video, we have the Sacrifice rune for Researcher Carrot. It increases the effectiveness of all allies by 5%. Nice to have, but nothing really to write home about. Additionally, she has the Sun rune, which if her health is 80% or higher, it reduces the incoming damage she receives by 20%. When you couple this with the S2 Flame Barrier, it is really, really difficult to kill Researcher Carrot. Lastly, we have the Relic Rune, which if she is attacked, it has a 100% chance to dispel one debuff from the caster. This is really awesome because it means you can actually get away without having to play immunity on Researcher Carrot. You can still do it for the additional safety and security, but you basically would need your opponent to stun you twice if they want to make sure that your Researcher Carrot loses their turn. Really awesome passive, and it's very reminiscent of the passive that is on Fighter Maya that makes her so good. Granted, Fighter Maya's is probably a little bit better since it can trigger more than once per turn cycle. Our first build for Researcher Carrot is what I like to call the Speedy Burst Mage build. 
you're basically going to take her and juice up her speed ever so slightly so that she can go ahead of key DPS on the enemy team, such as say a green landy. You're gonna go in, you're going to soul burn her S3 flame spout in order to strip any potential buffs on the enemy team, rain down a ton of burn stacks on them, potentially knock them out of stealth, and then follow it with the extra turn for the detonate to secure an early kill. When it comes to the actual stats on the build itself, we're obviously going to be on a speed set and you can play any kind of 2P set as well to complement this. For the desired stats, we're looking for 4,400 attack, 1,500 defense, 12 HP, 230 speed, the standard crit chance, crit damage, and then also a little bit of effectiveness. You really don't need that high effectiveness on Researcher Carrot. Uh, most of the characters that you're trying to secure an early kill on won't be building effect resistance, so don't worry if you have very low effectiveness on the character. In fact, you can go as low as zero. When it comes to also talking about the other stats, if you feel you're not doing enough damage on Carrot, you can juice the attack up to 4,900 at the expense of going to like say 10k health. And if you find that you are dying on this build, you can juice up Carrot's health to about 15k uh, and you'd probably end up dropping the attack to somewhere around 38 or 3,900. When we take a look at the right side, attack percentage necklace and attack percentage ring with speed percentage boots. If you have really insane gear for speed, you can go attack percentage boots and go to like say maybe like 200 or 210 speed if you with uh, you know crazy speed subs. I would probably still would just stick to speed boots. Artifact of choice is to Hegel's ancient book simply because it's super broken on the S3. This character's reworked S3 is absolutely snapped and to Hegel's takes advantage of those kinds of abilities oh so well. The other build to consider is the old school counter detonate build. This is the build that researcher carrot players have been playing since the specialty change was first released. The idea is to basically have your opponent attack carrot and get the burn stack and then surprise them with a counter for not only big burst damage but potentially a kill. It also has the added benefit of CR pushing and slowing the target. The CR push is really nice because it could cut in front of somebody and basically potentially set up a scenario where your opponent who thought they were going to get a turn might end up getting denied. So really, really good there. This is definitely the build I think that a bruiser or a tanky style player would want to play as the carrot has more survivability at the expense of being able to outright burst uh, kill a squishy DPS at the start of the fight. When we take a look at the actual stats, 4,500 attack. 1500 defense, 14 k HP, 185 speed, and then the base crit chance, crit damage, and effectiveness. Again, we don't need that much effectiveness if all we're trying to do is kill squishy DPS with her. You can go higher on the attack if you really want to get those big, big burns, which is around, I'd say, 4900 attack at the expense of dropping the health down to like as low as, say, like 10.5 or 11 k HP. You can obviously do this again with speed build. Uh, but if you really want those big burns, I think that's where you're going to want to end up being. If you want an even tankier carrot, you can juice the HP up to about 16k and drop the attack to around 38 or 3900. Your carrot won't do a lot of damage, but if you were really dead set on drawing the game out, that is probably where I would make her stats end up landing. When we look at the right side gear, we're going to be on either an attack percentage or HP necklace. Whichever one you choose for the necklace, make sure you choose the opposite for the ring. So if you choose attack percentage necklace, you want health percentage ring. Boots were on speed. I really just don't think that attack percentage is going to work on counter. You'll just be far too slow and your opponent will just take advantage of you. You just won't cycle fast enough for the S2 passive. Again, when we look at the artifact to Hegel's ancient book, because it is absolutely broken. When choosing teammates to draft with your researcher carrot for World Arena, consider characters such as Dien, General Pergus, and Maid Chloe. These are all attack buffers that make sure that carrot's burns do a lot more damage, and they also provide her with either some form of survivability or utility. Adventurer Roz is also a character to note here. After soul burning the S3 with carrot and using the S1 to follow up with a detonate, Roz will basically guarantee with his S2 an additional detonate on an extra character, allowing you to get two characters off the board very quickly. He also provides a really awesome defense buff. So when should we choose Researcher Carrot? I think she's good into characters such as Landy, Spectre Tenebria, and possibly even Red Ravi. Her S3 Flame Spout does ludicrous amounts of damage as you already know, and it's really good against squishy stealth units. It's doubly worse for Landy when you think about it because she has elemental disadvantage and her over-reliance on her S3 means she can't even be effective without burning herself. Taking a look at Red Ravi, the passive can cleanse any stuns that Ravi throws her way and return burn stacks, which leads to some pretty hilariously high damage detonate scenarios. 
As for characters I would avoid bringing Researcher Carrot against, I would probably not bring her against Blue Kise, Remnant Violet, and Operator Cigarette. Kise and Rylet can be built fast enough with high enough damage to outright kill your Carrot before she even gets her barrier up. Kise is of particular note because even if she doesn't one-shot your Carrot, she can strip the barrier and leave your Carrot incredibly vulnerable to any follow-up attacks. Opponents can also bait your S2 Flame Barrier, which sets up for an instant kill from an Operator Cigarettes S2. And that does it for Researcher Carrot. Never did I think in a million years that a character I used to play as a meme would end up becoming a top tier pick in the current World Arena meta. So yeah, that's uh, going to be it for the video. If you guys enjoyed it, as always, leave me a like or subscribe would mean a ton to me. I'm closing in very quickly on a thousand subs. Would really love to hit that goal. means so much to me. Uh, additionally, as always, share the video with your friends, your guildmates, if you think it will help them. And again, leave me a comment down below whether you're letting me know if I'm doing well, what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, or just what you want to see in the next video. And until then, later.